is it do you think would be your the biggest thing in that you have developed or accomplishment or achievement or the thing that you would like to be known for the things that you have done for psychology mm -hmm. that you would like us followers to promote maybe this thing that we just did you know, working with consciousness because when you work with consciousness you can produce effects which you cannot which really look miraculous but yet they are natural maybe the thing the thing that I feel most simply useful Father Boo, fresh from PhD studies in Fordham University in New York, set up the psychology department and his clinic for testing and therapy. There I met this brilliant, exciting, and very attractive personality who was quite irresistible. I was immediately hooked and became part of a band of young and bright-eyed groupies around Father Bulatang discovering the brave new world of psychology. It was from Father Boo that I first deeply appreciated that psychology was a discipline, which means that it is essentially defined by its methods, and in particular, of course, the scientific method. From him, I learned that psychology was not just about being curious and asking meaningful questions about human behavior, attitudes, cognitions, and development, but that it was our collective responsibility to pursue these questions using rigorous criteria for trustworthiness of data collection, analysis, and interpretation what any experimental psych student would call reliability and validity and rich contextualization. He had an immense contribution to Philippine psychology. He's one of the really founding fathers. And I think his, his uh, creativity, his uh, way of experimenting and exploring new phenomena like for example consciousness other state of consciousness he was also very much into training so, so we were really very uh, well trained by him and his important contribution in uh, filipino psychology the hiya phenomenon group discussion group dynamics and primarily all areas of philippine psychology His room was the messiest room in the world. And so one day I said, Father, do you want me to fix your room? So, kasi parang if the room is square, you can only take two or three steps inside the room and sit down on the sofa. And then he would sit on a chair. But other that, than that, he, you couldn't get in because of there were too many books, too many whatever stuff on the table. You, so finally, okay, I fixed this room and it took me a long time, maybe two months or so. So that's the time when he, I would say, Father, what's this? What's this for? Ah, that's a crystal ball. And so he would, he would uh, do, show me how to use the crystal ball. And then sometimes he, there would be duendes. What is this for? And then he said, oh, I bought that from Kiapo. So when someone comes and says that there are duendes in his room or in their house, uh, I would say, does it look like this duende? And actually, his duendes are yung, uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And so, and they say, oh, yes, that's the duende. It looks like that. And then he would say, OK, um, somehow the duende spirit would go into the duende figure and then he would say okay leave them here with me now 
Father Wu taught me how to think scientifically of any phenomenon that is even a common phenomenon that people laugh at, but you can approach it in a scientific manner. And that's what he taught me, how to approach anything scientifically, how to think in a scientific manner, but still be creative. That's a great contribution, I think, to the field and very valued uh, training that I had with him. And that was his intellectual playfulness, his openness to the strange and the unexplainable, the magical mystery, mystical tour, so to speak, you know? his foresight and vision and courage that took him to delve and study minutely and experientially phenomena of consciousness and human experience that were not at that time canonical topics for psychological study. For instance, there was a famous writer who called Father Bu a Jedi master of an unknown universe. Pertaining to Father Bu's explorations into the uncharted territories of what is considered the mystical, whether that is the study of the altered state of consciousness to psi research of the paranormal, to local cases of possession, mysticism, cure, sapi, or psychic healing that the West has never seen nor heard of that Father Boo documented. I, I think it's, it's simply our, our continuing interest in people really entering, entering into into their world. Uh, for example, we were chatting about a, a girl who, who, who came because the family said she was possessed by the Santo Nino. Okay, so you, know, you would say that's very occult. But what's fascinating is that, so this girl comes to the Jesuit residence with the parents. He meets them in the parlor. And ano ginawa niya? He talked to the Santo Nino. <laughs> You know, something like Santo Nino, the girl, because the girl was possessed to the Santo Nino. And then after a while, he said, Okay, now you can go back to the Santo Nino. And the girl snapped out of it. And so, what I would say is that he entered her world. Maybe our scientific people would say, Well, that's, all, that's just hysteria or whatever it is. But he accepted her world. He accepted that for this girl in the family, they really believed in. Uh, in, in, her, in her being possessed by the Santo Nino, and he entered into that world, and within that world, he helped that girl, and I, I was very struck by that. The other question, what else do you want to do from now To live in this world? Yeah. Well, this thing of setting up a, a community, mm -hmm. a research community, oh, for psychologists, sociologists, social psychologists, and anthropologists to set up a research community. The community, that's what it means that they are talking to each other and, and that will be, the center will be for a long time. built the PhD program, we started it, we built it, it became a very a top clinical program in the Philippines and pioneered in many things. And uh, there, Father Bu was all there directing us, challenging us all the time, experimenting with um, altered states of consciousness, ESP, hypnosis, not, not in a way that's focus-focus, uh, but in a very scientific way. Father Boo was constantly trying out new things. Although best known as a clinical psychologist, Father Boo was a pioneer in many fields, Filipino values and personality, group dynamics, even industrial organizational psychology. He took me aside one day and said, and I quote, so Father Boo said, you know, Amy, there's something new going on in psychology. Uh, I think it's called cognitive psychology, sabi niya. I don't know anything about it, sabi niya. 
So I think I'll teach a course on it. I thought that was quite stunning. And I had never before heard another professor uh, speak like that. So Father Boo taught the first undergraduate class in cognitive psychology in Ateneo, even designing his own experiments. And when I arrived in the U.S. Uh, a few months later, I did find that psychology was in fact in the midst of the so-called cognitive revolution. But of course, Father Bu was already a few steps ahead of the times. The main lessons I have learned from Father Bu are, first, psychology must combine the best of the discipline. It must be both science and art. It must emphasize scholarship and research as well as practice. I think what he did very, very wonderfully is bring what he learned, but also bring in the Filipino culture and the phenomena of extrasensory perception and all these, um, you know, very transpersonal um, psychology. And so I think um, he made such a dent in our lives, uh, in all of you know, all of our his colleagues, but also his, especially his students, but also the Philippine society. I think. I mean, he is um, he's really championed um, psychology um, in the Philippines. Sai